Okay, in this video, we are going to look into building a drum trigger using an FSR, a force sensing resistor, as you can see here. Now, if you have an acoustic drum set and you want to apply a drum trigger to it, it's best to go out and buy a commercial one. They're not that expensive and they're usually piezo triggers. Now, this one uses a different technology. This is a force sensing resistor. A piezo trigger actually generates its own voltage. This one is actually a voltage divider and when I apply pressure to the FSR I'll get, a, I'll get a pulse output. So I built this mostly for special effects. So right now I have it connected up to my kick drum. So you could, you could actually take this and, and sew it into a glove and you could use it as a finger drum like that. So if you look at the scope I'll give it one pulse and I'll give it a pulse train now if this was a piezo sensor, if I flicked it like this, it would actually trigger it. A piezo sensor is very sensitive. But this one you actually have to apply pressure to change the resistance of the FSR. And it's a voltage divider with this resistor here. And then we get an output pulse from this capacitor. So it's basically two components, a resistor and a capacitor, and a force sensing resistor. And as we apply pressure to it, it gives us pulses into our drum controller. Okay, I have removed my FSR from my breadboard and replaced it with a flex sensor, as you can see here. This works in the same technology as the FSR, it's resistive, and when we flex it, we'll get a different resistance on the outputs. I've changed the components on my breadboard, I have different values for my capacitor and my resistor. So we could take this flex sensor and glue it to the back of a, a thick rubber mat, and when we hit the rubber mat, it will flex the rubber mat, and we'll actually get a trigger into our drum controller. So I'll give this a flex. You can see it's triggering our drum controller. So every time we hit the rubber mat, it will flex the rubber mat. And we can hit it as hard as we can because it's, it's hitting the rubber mat. It's not actually hitting the sensor. And then we can trigger our controller. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of my drum trigger circuit that I built on my breadboard. You can see it's fairly simple. So here's my FSR. It's in series with a 120k ohm resistor. Now the FSR has a very high resistance when no pressure is applied. And then when you apply pressure, the resistance will drop suddenly and we'll get a voltage rise on this point here. Now, so we'll get a step voltage here and that's going to go through the capacitor and that's going to trigger our controller. Now my drum controller had a resistance of 33k ohms, the input impedance, so that's going to load down our pulse. So if you don't want any loading, you can actually put a voltage follower here of an op amp, and then you can run this off 5 volts. So here's a circuit diagram of my flex sensor. So I had to change the component values because it had a different dynamic range on my uh, FSR. So I have a 47k ohm resistor in series with the flex FSR, and a 0.47 microfarad capacitor which is feeding the drum controller. Okay, so that's my little tutorial on how to build a drum trigger using FSRs. Now if you want to build a drum trigger using piezo material, there's hundreds of videos online how to do that. You take a piezo speaker and glue it down to a drum pad. So I just wanted to do something different to use either FSR or you could even use Velostat. Now if you look, I have a video called Force Sensing Materials where I get into Velostat, I actually made a sensor that goes into your shoe with this. You can make it any size you want and then by tapping on your toes or your heel of your shoe you could, you could actually get a drum trigger. But with the FSR it's very simple to use a FSR to trigger your drum controller. I hope this gave you some ideas how you could activate your drum controller.